Hello everybody. Today we're going to continue on with uh, our little game that we got going on here, so uh, let's get started. At the end of the last video I challenged you to make a life counter. Now, the number one mistake people make when they think they have to add another counter, because I have a counter that's going to count the grass that I pick up, now I want a counter that's going to, that is going to um, show the lives for my hero. So I'm going to give the hippo, say, three lives to start every time the snake touches the hippo. It loses a life. Um, so people say, okay, well, that means I have to go over here and make a new counter. No, it does not. You have already got an, a counter class. So what you're going to do now is you're going to use the class to make another counter object. Okay? So when you see these, these are called classes, and they're kind of like blueprints or recipes. For example, if I want to make cookies, I pull out the recipe and I use the recipe to make a cookie or two cookies or three cookies and I can alter the recipe if I want to kind of change the type of cookie I'm making. So think of this as a recipe and I'm going to go use it again. So I want the counter to be in my world so I'm going to go to my world here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another counter. So I'm going to copy that line and I'm going to paste and I'm going to say life count. So weird analogy but it's like if you have if I have kids like my first kid I name it you know I had my first child and I named my first child Emily and then I had another child and I named that child Owen I don't have to go and make two counters to make two objects I just name them different so my first counter is named my count and my second counter is going to be named life count and I put my count on the screen here and I'm going to put the other counter which I named life count. I'm going to put it at the bottom of the screen so let's put it at 50 remember that's the x coordinate and I'm going to put it down at like 380 maybe and you have to kind of just fool around with that and see if yeah that's pretty good actually so I've got a counter for my grass, I've got a counter for my lives. The only thing is I want this one to start at 3. And so I'll go back to my code, and the way I do that is as soon as I make the counter, I say life count dot set value 3. And with any luck, boom, there we go. Okay, now how do we make it, you know, decrease when we get rid of live so I go to was it the snake yeah so here's the snake class and I'm wrong because this I'm looking for the intersection code and I guess I didn't put it here I put it in the hippo so I look in the hippo and oh here's the intersection code so every time the snake intersects with the hippo I'm going to set the location of the snake or of the, sorry, I'm going to set the location of the hippo back to 200, 200, and I'm also going to decrease the lives counter. So, remember, it's in my world, life count, and I'm going to uh, set, or no, I think there's a, I'm forgetting all of the stuff that's available. So, <clears throat> after the period, if I hit, oops, if I hit, Control space. It should be able to see all of the different options that I have for that counter. I'm waiting because sometimes there's a delay, but it doesn't seem to be coming up for me. But if you hit control space after the period, you should be able to see all of the different things a counter can do. The other way I can do that, I can right click over here on the counter over here, and if I go to I guess, sorry, I double click on counter and I go to documentation. And now I can see all of the different things that a counter can do. So a counter can add, and that's what I was thinking. Um, it's got an add method, so it's very easy to add more to a counter, but I guess there's no subtract method. But notice there is a set value. So what I'm going to do is to decrease the counter by one, let's go back. So I'll go to my hippo code 
and I'm gonna say I want to set the value of the counter now what do I what do I want to set it to I want to set it to its current value minus one so how are we gonna do that it's gonna look weird but it's not too bad we just have to copy this line here copy that bit of code because now we want to get the value and we're gonna subtract one so this line looks complicated but what it's doing is it's saying I want to set the value of the life count that's found in my world and the value that I want to set it to is whatever the current value is and then I'm going to subtract one. Let's see if it works. So we hit the run button and I can still collect grass. If I hit the snake, oh, so look at the counter. Now, you can see there is a problem because if I stay there, this is where the, where the, when the snake hits me, it puts me back there and the snake is hitting me over and over and over again. So my counter is going down to, I now have negative 125 lives, which is indicates how good I am at video games. So yeah, there's a little issue there, but good news is the counter seems to be working. So that's fantastic. Um, now, the other part of the challenge was to make a lose world. So I go up here, I make a new subclass, and I'm going to call it lose world, and I'll give it a dark background because losing is bad and dark, and you don't want to lose. So if I now, I want to say if the counter here gets to zero, then go to lose world. So I go back here. It says I go back here. Why is it not cooperating? Let's go to the hippo, okay? And I go back to that intersection code here. This is where I change the value of the counter, right? So location is key. This is where I wanna put my code. I say if, and I wanna check on the value of the counter. So if I get the value of the counter, and if it happens to be equal to zero, then I want to go to lose world. So I say set, world is it set world i might get this wrong uh lose i want to make a new lose world like so is that right that doesn't seem right something seems wrong there so i forget right off, off, bleh, off the top of my head i forget how to do it but what i do then is i look up in the code and i say okay where do they change the world and look this is where i change the world so i'm close Right, set world, new second world, but it's greenfoot dot set world. So once in a while, you're gonna forget little things. Look around in your code, look online, you'll find the answer pretty quickly. And you know, it's kind of like when you're learning a new language. You know, if I was learning Spanish, I might forget how to say certain words once in a while, and you just get used to it after a while. So there we go. Now I think it should work. So let's see if we go to lose world. One, two, and oh, there you go. So, good, it seems to work. That's how we do all that stuff. Okay, now, we're gonna do the thing that my students always wanna do the most. We're gonna make the hippo shoot, because the hippo should be able to shoot. So, what we wanna do is we wanna make it so when they hit the space bar, the hippo shoots a, quote, bullet. So, first thing we better do is we better pick an item for a bullet. So if you look in here, uh, you know, if you look hard enough, you'll see there are little circle-y type things, like there's a beeper. I could use that as my bullet. Um, that might be the uh, And here's a whole bunch of buttons. Yeah, these ones are pretty big. I could resize those. By the way, you can go and find your own images online, and you can import them and use whatever you like. We haven't done that yet, but we will. Um, but we want to find a small little circle for a bullet, so I'm gonna take this guy. That's just the, the image I'm choosing, and I'm gonna give it the class name of bullet. Okay, so what I've done now is I've just imported, or, uh, or I've made a new class called bullet, and when I make a new bullet object, it's gonna be a red dot. Now, when do I wanna do that? I wanna do that when I hit the space bar, and it's gonna come from the hippo. So I already have some code that detects a key, so I'm gonna copy and paste there, make this a little bigger. And I'm gonna take all of that out and really all I'm looking for is if somebody hits the space bar, 
I'm going to do something. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to make a new bullet. So I'm going to say get world dot add object because I want to add the bullet to the screen. New bullet. Like so. Now, it's going to have a problem with that because when I add a new bullet to the screen, I need an X and a Y coordinate. So just for fun, let's just put 300, 300. And I just want to see if it's going to work. So I'm going to run this. I move around. I hit space. Hey, look at that. Something happened. There's a red dot right there. And I lost. Okay, so that's good. We know it's working. Now, we don't want it to appear here. We want it to appear where? We want it to appear wherever the hippo is, right? Because the hippo is the one firing the bullet, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say. And so we want it to appear at the x and y coordinate of the hippo. If only we knew the x and y coordinate of the hippo. Wait a minute, we do, because we've been tracking that, right? So we can say we want the bullet to appear at x pose, y pose, which should be the x and y coordinate of the hippo. So, ah, there we go. And now I can shoot bullets. Now, the bullets are not very effective. They're also bigger than I thought they'd be, but oh well, so be it. Because um, they're not doing anything. So how do we make the bullet do something? So I click on the bullet, and all I want the bullet to do, let's say the bullets are all going to go to the right. We're only going to shoot to the right, because yes, we can shoot in all directions, but that's going to come later. It's a little harder than you think. So. For the bullet, I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did for the hippo. I'm going to make two variables that track the x and the y position. And the x pose is going to be equal to the current x like that. And the y pose is going to be equal to the current y like that. And then I'm going to set the location. And since we're, the bullet is always going to be in motion, like as soon as the bullet enters the screen, it should always be in motion. There's no if statement here. I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to take the bullet. I'm going to add five. I'm just choosing five randomly. It could be something else. And, uh, and that's going to make the bullet move to the right, okay? Because I'm adding five pixels in the x direction. So again, I make these two variables to keep the x and the y position. And then I'm going to get the x. I'm going to get the y. I'm going to store them in these variables. And then I'm going to set the location to a slightly different one. So we do it now, watch that bullet. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, so I've got some shooting. And you can see they've got some things like it's still on the edge of the screen. I don't really want it to be on the edge of the screen. But again, things that we can deal with later. So we've got bullet on screen, we've got bullet moving. Now we need bullet to interact with snake, right? So I think, where have I done interaction stuff? Like, where have I done intersection? And look, I've got an example right here. I'm going to copy this example. This is where the hippo intersected with the grass. I'm going to go to bullet, and I'm going to put some code right here. And I'm going to say actor. Let's say the bullet's trying to hit the snake, so I'll make that an S. And I'm going to say if, I'm going to check to see if the bullet is intersecting with the snake. And if it is, then what are we going to remove from the world? We are going to remove the snake. Okay, like that. So again, is the bullet hitting the snake? If it is hitting the snake, we remove it from the world. Run, and this is where I, oh yeah, there we go, nailed it. All right, and now I can eat all the grass I want to. So, not the greatest video game still because, you know, I, I shoot the snake and the uh, game's over. But that's the idea behind shooting. I've got a bullet that moves and it's got its own intersection code. So, for today, I would like you to make your hero shoot. And once you've done that, uh, you're going to do your first Greenfoot project. So. Get that done and then check back a little bit later and I'm going to have your first assignment where you're going to basically build on this game. I'm going to have you do some things um, like make some new levels and I'm going to have you maybe make those bullets disappear from the side of the screen. So you're going to do some, uh, some building upon the game that you have already. Okay. And as always, if you have any questions, please just fire me an email and uh, we'll go from there. 
So I hope you like my hippo shooting red dots and trying to evade the snake and all that good stuff. All right, have a great day, everyone. See you soon.